Welcome back, everyone. A strike of more than 30,000 Boeing workers could impact travelers across the globe. And if you are thinking of causing a scene on your next flight, this might give you pause. We are talking travel this Wednesday. And of course, there's no better person to do that with than CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg. Thanks, as always, for joining me this morning. Um, lots of problems, Peter, for Boeing in recent years. And today, Boeing workers return to the picket line. Could this strike hurt any chance at a rebound for the company? And more importantly, how might it impact travelers? Well, in the short term, of course, it's not good news for Boeing, but it's not going to have any direct impact on travelers since Boeing, their production line has already been slowed, if not stopped, because of all the other investigations in the wake of the 737 MAX and the 787, and of course, the hearings in, in, in Congress and a pending investigation, or I should say a continuing investigation by both the NTSB and of course the FAA. In the long term, though, it's not good news for anybody because as those production line stoppages continue, that means planes don't get delivered to airlines and routes that were announced and, and, uh, and schedules that were announced have to be revised. Of course, this is all happening at a time when people are not traveling as much, right? We're coming into the fall quarter, so that's a little bit better news. But if this strike continues any longer, uh, then we're going to have a real problem come spring. All right, good, good to know that, note that. It also uh, seems like mid-flight meltdown, meltdowns are happening more frequently, at least anecdotally, the latest being a man in Australia who forced his plane to turn around after being drunk and disorderly. He's now being fined for the fuel that he wasted. So this seems to be a new thing. Do you think U.S. airlines could follow suit? Well, you know, well, they've already done some of that, but not in, in, a, in an unlimited way. You know, of the 6,000 cases in 2022 of disorderly, unruly, or downright violent passengers, only about 43 went to serious fines or, or jail time. Uh, so a lot of things don't get referred out. It's still very costly for a plane to divert. We're talking at least five figures in most cases. Oh, wow. If he's only being fined for the fuel that he wasted, he got off easy. The real problem here is, of course, consequences. And the airlines you know, refer these cases to local authorities, and then it's up to them to see if they want to take it up the ladder. So far, only 43 cases that we know of in last year ever went all the way to a fine or jail time. Hmm. Uh, you also wrote on PeterGreenberg.com that some airports in Europe are using CT scanners that allow passengers to carry liquids and other items through security, all those banned, of course, uh, since 9-11. Uh, but the U.S. won't be doing it anytime soon. So why is that and how long will we have to wait here in the U.S.? Well, the technology is already available. Those advanced uh, C CT scanners were actually put in, into place at London City Airport, which got rid of the 311 rule. You could take all your lotions and potions through security, which came as a very depressing note to airport retailers that could no longer charge you the $6 for the bottle of water. But the bottom line is they have not been rolled out throughout the United Kingdom yet. And in the U.S., the, the TSA has already said, even though the technology is available, the machines have proven that they work, but they won't be implementing them for at least another three or four years. Uh, no one's going to give me the answer. I've, I've been trying to get an answer why. Because if the technology is available and the training is not difficult, because these, these machines allow TSA agents to have a 3D look at everything and they can distinguish between a bottle of Diet Coke and liquid explosive and everything in between, uh, we may just have to wait because they may not be budget for it or the time to train the agents. Yeah, well, that makes sense. All right, before we go, I have to ask, of course, like I do every week now, where are you today? I just landed last night from Hong Kong in another H state or H city, Huntsville, Alabama, here to do one of our PBS specials on the state of Alabama. And we're going over to Space City in about an hour. Wow, from Hong Kong to Huntsville. <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite a number of miles there. Peter Greenberg, thank you so much. CBS Travel Editor, we always appreciate you joining us. You got it.